Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany, here with my co-hosts Emily Campagno and Harris Faulkner. Also joining us, Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall and former Georgia congressman and the host of the Doug Collins podcast, it's Doug Collins. Well, we begin with a historic night in Iowa. Donald Trump scored a historic win in last night's Iowa caucuses, breaking several records and carrying, get this, 98 of the state's 99 counties in a landslide victory. And he was just one vote away from carrying all 99. With 99% of the vote in, Donald Trump clinched 51% of the votes. Ron DeSantis came in a distant second place with 21%. He beat Nikki Haley, who came in third with 19%. Vivek Ramaswamy, meanwhile, suspended his presidential campaign after coming in fourth, and he endorsed Trump. But Leslie, you know, coming back to last night, if I'm Joe Biden and I watch this, and, and we'll get into next block, his response to this, but the thing that worries me is a passionate, enthusiastic base that went out in bone chilling temperatures. Trump has a hard lock on this base. They are showing up in 2024. The Biden base, I don't know. They're, they're a little bit weaker, a little more tepid. Do they show up? Well, I think they do. At this point, if you remember in 2020, and I'm not going to say this is 2020 or all, all over again, or in the green room, Doug and I, Doug was saying, I think it's 2016 uh, all over again. Uh, look, I just want to say so far, I agree with what uh, Harrison and, uh, and Doug said, um, you know, because uh, my governor, uh, Gavin Newsom, had said to Ron DeSantis, you're going to drop out and you're going to support Trump. And that's going to happen after New Hampshire, but he definitely uh, was helping Trump by staying in the game and not giving uh, Nikki Haley number two. But number two is not number one. There's only you know, a spot for number one. And I do think we need to get to uh, uh, Donald Trump because not everybody came out with the weather. And that, right, that but number do you think the Biden percent. base will turn out? I do think the Biden base will turn out because what happened in 2020, and I see it happening now, now that's the same race, even though it's the same people, it's different time, and voters, uh, voters change their minds. A, a couple of things. One, you have it between that guy and this guy, blue and red, Democrat and Republican, and that could be approximately 45% or more of voters on both sides. Mm -hmm. So that sliver, it's going to be the issue that matters to them. For some, it's immigration in a border state. For some, it's the economy. So yes, I think no, the no, enthusiasm for, for will increase both? and they will turn out for, for both. So <laughs> President Biden is already trying to seize on Donald Trump's big win in Iowa last night. Biden is rallying his base against the former president and the MAGA agenda. Biden took to social media, or someone did for him. Looks like Donald Trump just won Iowa. He's the clear front runner on the other side at this point. But here's the thing, and I can almost hear him saying it. This election was always going to be you and me versus extreme MAGA Republicans. It was true yesterday and it'll be true tomorrow. So if you're with us, chip in now. He usually whispers that part. Well, ahead of Trump's historic win in Iowa, the Biden-Harris campaign yesterday revealed they have $117 million of cash on hand, touting it as the historic haul, which, quote, sends a clear message the Team Biden-Harris coalition knows the stakes of this election and is ready to win this November. So, Leslie, the big thing with Donald Trump has always been what he could do without all of that big cash. Yeah, but I mean, it is it is a haul for there's some enthusiasm, check writing, uh, you know, definitely an enthusiastic factor. Look, where we are right now, and even voters, and there are polls that show they may not be real happy with the economy, even though the economy is going well, over 200,000 jobs added just this past month at the end of last year. When you have uh, November, almost a year away, there were voters that have said they know it's going to get better. They may not be feeling it now, and they're going to be feeling it then. And like you said, Harris, yes, it is the economy for most voters, regardless of your ideology, your political party. Um, I, you know, I think it's great that you know they have the money, but I have to say. Look, I'm not going to lie. I don't like low numbers. And I do think those numbers are going to come up. But I said in 2016, I was worried when I saw the crowds. I was worried when I saw the numbers you with did. Donald Trump. And I, did, and I also said it was possible he'd win. It's possible he wins again. And my party needs to be aware of that. And also, not just play this like it's 2016, because just mm -hmm. saying, you know, it's, it's MAGA extremist, that's not enough. It wasn't so enough in 2016. It won't be now. Are you worried about the numbers this time? Because, I mean, when he yes. does show up in Iowa, <laughs> people show up. Yes. People come out for him who may not have ever voted for him before. I'm, I'm worried about the numbers right now. I'll see when it just comes down to the two of them. Oh. I've already delivered the message to Iran. They know not to do anything. Oh, well, apparently Iran doesn't know not to do anything. Because just yesterday, 
the Iran-backed Houthi rebels filed, fired a missile that struck a U.S.-owned and operated cargo ship in the Gulf of Aden. The attack appears to be the first time the Houthis have successfully struck a U.S.-owned or operated vessel. Iran also fired missiles at what it claimed were Israeli spy headquarters near the U.S. consulate in northern Iraq. So much for that message, Mr. President. The congressman lays out such a clear deterrence strategy or method or simply just sticking to our words. Why can't this administration do that? Well, first of all, to his point, uh, Doug's right about, I, I would agree with you on the sanctions. That was done during the uh, mm -hmm. Obama years. However, you know, it can't be the United States is doing this in a vacuum. We have an international community. Right now we have the U.K. with us. We have the Saudis sitting down trying to get another peace deal. Um, but, you know, we have been, and the Yemeni people have been victims for over eight years of these kinds of airstrikes. And they're the ones who are really hurting. They're the ones who are the casualties. So we, I believe, the United States and our international community, we need to empower, and that is financially, with weaponry, et cetera, the Yemeni military to fight against the Houthis because what we're doing right now is temporary it may help regarding uh, international shipping uh, but it's not going to be the long-term solution right now it's a ban well why can't Saudi Arabia do that they're having peace talks with them right now well the 2024 election just started and American voters are already being attacked after Trump's historic Iowa win last night some of the media showed utter disdain for voters who supported him <clears throat> so he can't speak the guy who represents half the country can't speak when you are a news network, I don't care what network you are, you should report the news, and that should be both sides. And, you know, so if uh, Joe Biden's talking, you know, you, yep. you should cover it. I understand every network is, is, is a business, okay? And every network, you know, you have ratings and you have advertising. And if, if you're making that decision because, okay, we're into it, we don't see good trends, let's cut away, that's one thing. You know, but, but you, have, you have to put out the information to the American people and let them make their right. decision. Right, instead of Jake That's Tapper. journalism one on one. Some Tesla owners might be having second thoughts about their electric cars. Freezing the Midwest temperatures seem to be making them useless. Experts say EV batteries need to warm up to accept a fast charge. And charging stations in and around the Chicago area, for example, are filling up with frozen Teslas as their owners desperately try to get a charge. A lot of snow cones around, Leslie. You said you had a good answer for this. All right. Well, I like my answer for this. <laughs> I lived in Chicago, Buffalo, Cleveland. I'm Ooh. from Boston, even though I live in Los Angeles. I know cold. And I can tell you this, as a kid, I remember Oh, darn, the battery's dead again because it's so cold. We didn't have a garage at my house. Mm -hmm. I, I, can't, I didn't come from, you know, middle or upper middle class parents. And so this can, this can happen with, you know, gas vehicles, not just electric vehicles. Weather can certainly affect, you know, cars that have gas or cars that are electric. And, and that does happen when you have really frigid temperatures. Last but not least, a heartwarming moment going viral. A 101-year-old World War II veteran tearing up as he meets his newborn great-great-granddaughter for the first time. Sweetie, <laughs> what in the world are you doing? <laughs> you got to kiss, sweetie. Oh, is it? My goodness alive. Oh, goodness. Goodness, oh. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, he's got that touch. You hear that baby quiet right so down, sweet. right? Dewey Muirhead served in the Army Air Corps from 1942 to 1945. His great-great-granddaughter, her name is Millie, and Millie's mom said they recorded the meeting so they could show the little one one day. She says they'll sh cherish it forever. Oh, I, I won't forget that. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. And they blindfolded him. It was the professional photographer's yeah. idea to capture it and then unblindfolded him to get his organic reaction. So, so beautiful. To reveal. Really. I think that's something we all agree on. Yeah. That's just awesome. That's power right. of family. That's right. The power of family. That's right. Yes. What a blessing. And what I can't wait to is for Millie to grow up and to see her, her great, great grandfather for the hero he was that clearly that family is dedicated to passing those stories and memories down. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. God bless them. Amen.
Millie, you are blessed. Your whole family is. Thank you for watching Outnumbered, everybody.